time to spotlight Barrick Gold. Gold and Copper Miner reported its earnings yesterday for the third quarter. We're looking forward to having a great discussion. Mark Brissow is here, president and CEO at Barrick Gold. Thank you for being here. Tell us about the latest quarter, G-O-L-D, folks, the ticker symbol, best ticker symbol you've got. Um, some of your thoughts about the latest quarter. Hello, Nicole. So a quarter, um, a, a steady quarter, certainly a quarter that benefited from the rising gold price. Uh, earnings up 33%, uh, a strong attributable EBITDA of uh, 21% improvement. We kept our dividend, strengthened our balance sheet, bought some uh, back some shares, really as we're going into a big uh, capital investment growth period uh, starting next year. So it's important we keep our, our balance sheet strong. Yeah, the uh, gold prices, copper prices that help to buoy business overall, right? You said higher gold prices and higher copper yeah. prices did help uh, the company along. Do you anticipate that kind of trend to continue? What kind of trend do you see for prices? I think, Nicole, uh, you know, with the, the, the elections over in the U.S., everyone's trying to digest what's going to happen. But I think what we've seen is what's supporting the gold price is the is the the high debt uh, embedded in the Western economies, the developed economies. And of course, we're also experiencing a softer Chinese uh, economy. So we've seen a growth, the drive in the gold price has really been demand for physical gold. And more recently, we've seen the Western investors uh, start uh, coming into the market through the ETF because the ETF has had outflows until just two months ago. So that's good for gold. Um, there was a correction with the announcement of uh, the Trump victory. Uh, but up at 2680 is still a very good gold price. And I don't believe that the trend is broken as far as the bull market goes. Copper, a little bit in the oversupply uh, side right now, but the demand side of the equation is still very strong. And we expect medium to long term that that demand will grow and, uh, and exacerbate the undersupply on the mining side for, for copper. And copper, as you know, is driven not only by the green uh, energy focus, but more importantly, infrastructural development. Yeah, dividend solid in place there. I saw uh, yep. that you plan your quarterly dividend. No issues there, right? No issues. And then I think about um, also about, you know, when you read the headline, it said that you missed on the top and bottom line, but it showed the growth that you had. It showed the revenue growth. It showed that you were buoyed by higher prices. I mean, what do you say to the naysayers who may be concerned? So, Nicole, uh, you know, mining is a long game, and and right now with the rising gold price, a lot of investors looking for that immediate uh, instant gratification, and 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 the Barrick story is about fixing uh, 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 a combination of assets we merged with Rand Gold back in 2019, and really uh, looking to to build back the organic growth opportunities. And we have a, an abundance of those growth opportunities now very clearly in our sites, both in gold in the form of our Dominican Republic expansion in Pablo Viejo and, uh, and our yeah. Nevada assets uh, in the United States. And then uh, two big copper projects, one in Africa and one in Asia. There are, and, and those are exciting, no doubt. There are a couple of things, you know, that I think about, you know, the uncertainty of what's going on, the macro uncertainty, geopolitical uncertainty, and, and that certainly gives a gain to all kinds of precious metals and such, and people do run to this group overall. Um, you know, Middle East conflict still seems to be going on. That may still hold and give a nice boost to gold overall. At the same time, we're reading today how oil is falling concerns about China demand. I mean, no China uh, growth. How how concerned are you about the China story? Where does that fit in, if at all? I think the China story is impacting on the copper um, uh, uh, story at the moment, and it and it's bound to be like that. New 
copper mines coming into production in the short term. But overall, the long term, I always say copper is as strategic as gold is precious. But certainly on the global economy risk side, um, uh, gold is a is a is a um, a metal that you should have in your portfolio. And what's exciting for us is right now we've seen seen the gold price being led by physical buying of the physical metal. Um, but the opportunity is to gear that through the equities. And that's the traditional follow on investment and definitely lots of upside in companies like uh, Barrick, which are trading at or below the underlying value. I was reading, so there's a couple of stories that I was reading about. One was you replenishing some of the reserves. I'd like to hear about that and how that's going. Also, terrorism in Pakistan. Um, threatened foreign mine development. At least 20 miners had been uh, hurt, killed, wounded. Um, and, you know, I didn't know if that was part of your region. It had said bar gold in there. Um, you know, where does that story fit into the big picture? The terrorism and also the replenishment that you're doing. So Pakistan, let's deal with the last one first, is a, is a complex jurisdiction. We are invested there. We're invested in Balochistan, in, in, in a very remote part of uh, Balochistan, very far away from those incidents that you're referring to. Um, and it's a very big investment. So it'll be the biggest uh, foreign private investment into the Pakistan economy ever. Um, and it has a real opportunity to deliver significant um, value to the Pakistan economy overall and to the Balochistan economy specifically. So, and it's a it's it's one of the largest uh, gold copper undeveloped projects in the world today. So significant in every aspect. Um, right. On the on the uh, the growth side, um, you know, we've really uh, and 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 again, we've seen lots of M and A activity and mining. People paying premium to do transactions to be able to deliver growth or increase the size of the of the businesses. Um, I've always built the business on the back of discovery and development. And that's the real way to create uh, value in the mining industry. And certainly the, the barrack of today has some, a number of major uh, projects in the making. We're just finishing off two feasibility studies, which will deliver, deliver two big mines over the next four years. Yeah, a lot of new projects, new exciting uh, growth that you're seeing going forward. I will also add, folks, the stock gold trading at 18.24 today and one year up 20 percent. But today, Scotiabank maintained their outperform on this name and has a price target of $24. So seeing some upside from the $18 where we are today. Mark Risto, thank you. President, CEO, Barrick Gold. Great to see you, Mark. Thank you.